Hi everyone, Deborah here. In this video, I just want to introduce a few techniques of advanced searching in Windows 11. The first thing I'm going to do is open File Explorer. I'm going to search this PC, or rather my hard drive, my C drive. So what I want to do is find, let's say I want to find specific files that are uh, picture files, for example, images. What I want to do is look for files that have specific file types in their names. Okay, that's after the dot. So uh, you would put, let's say I want to look for um, JPEG files. Okay, I'm going to type a dot and then I'm going to type JPG. And uh, I can press enter, but I don't have to. It's already automatically looking for any and all files that are JPEG files, .jpg. And it doesn't matter what the name is. I don't, I'm not specifying any particular type of name in front of the dot. I'm just putting .jpg. Okay, at this point, uh, it found a number of JPEG files, and I can just look through these, click on them if I want to, and open them and see what they are. But um, let's try something else. I'm going to go back up here to the search area and just put, let's see, let's say I want to look for any and all files that have CSIT 149 windows in the name. Now, depending on how many files I might have with that in the name, it could take just a few moments or it could take quite a while for windows to display the list. Okay, this is the list that it came up with. So this is what I have on my computer that has CSIT 149 windows in the name. But let's say that I, I want to create a search that does not return any images. I don't want to see the images. I want to see everything but images. And so right now, the only image it's bringing up is this one, a .png file, which is an image file. I can use a Boolean search technique. A Boolean search is one in which you use specific logic terms to return more focused results. So what I'm going to do here up here is put this. After the term that I put first, CSIT 149 Windows, I'm putting, I put the Boolean term not, and then I put what I don't want, so which is a .png. And if you look at my list, the PNG file is no longer there. Now let's say that I want to save this search because it's something that I want to use again in the future and probably many times. So I don't want to have to create, recreate it every time I want to use this search. So I point my mouse anywhere in the blank part of the results screen. I right click with my mouse and I go down here and I choose save search. Searches are saved in a specific folder. In the user folder that has your name under a subfolder called searches. Now, right now, it, it's coming up with the default name, and uh, that's fine. I like the name that it is, so I'm going to leave it at that, and then I'm going to click Save. Okay, so in the future, if I ever want to run that search again, all I have to do is call it up and run it. And so let's say that I'm looking for it here in my hard drive. So I'm going to go over here to my panel and expand out the C drive. And this is where you'll find it. You'll find it under Users. Then you look for the folder that has your name. Now your name will automatically be applied to this folder if you are the owner of the computer. So I'm going to open up my folder. And then I look for a subfolder that says searches. I'm going to open that one. And there's my saved search. Now, you know, opening up these folders can be kind of a hassle. So what if I, if I use this search a lot, 
I would really like to have a shortcut to it directly on my desktop. So I'm going to select that and I want to create the shortcut on the desktop. So I'm going to right click on it and I don't see what I want here so I'm going to click show more options and when this comes out you can a lot of people would like to just click right here create shortcut but don't do that because if you do that it'll just create a shortcut in this window I don't want it in the window here I want it on my desktop so this is what I do I go here where it says send to and then I choose right here desktop create shortcut so I'm going to click that and I'm going to move this these folders out of the way and here is my shortcut right here and you, I can tell it's the search because it has a magnifying glass in the icon so I'm going to click and drag to move it out make it a little easier to find and from now on if I ever want to run the search I just double click on that and it will run okay the next thing I want to show you is how to filter and reorganize things that you're seeing in a search result so that you can find exactly what you're looking for within a given folder. Okay, the first thing I want to do is change the view. Right now, let me move this over just a little bit. Right now, um, I, I'm not seeing too many details about these files. I can see the name and I can see the file type, but um, let's say that I want to look for the last file that I saved in this particular area, in this folder. What was the last thing I did, the last few things that I did? So um, the first thing I want to do is change the view. So I'm going to go up here and change the view to details. Okay, good. Now I can have, I can see the name, the date it was last modified, the type of uh, file or folder that it is, and the size of the folder. And you know what? You can change the um, width of these columns. Let's say that you, you know, I want to see more than what's being shown. So I can place my mouse right here in between the lines. So it's a double headed pointing arrow and click and drag over to the right to widen and then let go to widen out this particular column so I can see everything. And you can do that with any of the columns. Okay. Now, now let's say I want to look for things that are that I've saved or worked with uh, more recently. So when I click Date Modified, it should show me then the most recent thing that I created and saved. And if I scroll down, keep going down, it's showing me things in reverse order, going back to older or earlier items that I saved. Now, another thing I can do is reorganize this list based on what type of file. Let's say that I want to see all of the uh, PDF files all together. So I'm going to just click type and it'll organize everything in clusters. So for example, all of my MP4 files are here in one grouping. And if I keep going down further, there's more and more of them. So I can find pretty much whatever I'm looking for as long as I know that what I'm looking for is there. I can also go by size. Now another thing you can do, which is kind of cool, is to go over here to the sorting feature, click that, and you know make your choices of how you want to sort things by name or date or whatever. And then you can go down here and choose how to group the results. Do you want to see all the names grouped together, all the types grouped together? How do you want to do that? The rating, if there is such a thing, date taken, um, date modified. So let's say I go by size. The biggest ones are going to be at the top. The smaller ones are going to be at the bottom. And again, I can just click right here, up here where it says size, to reverse order and put the smaller ones at the top. And so that's pretty much all I wanted to bring to your attention right now. Please go on and have some fun with this unit.